You know, I spend a lot of time reading. You know, I've read the Bible quite a few times and kind of enjoy it. You know, I mean, there are different portions in there that I like better than others. And I'm like you, you know, I'll after a while jump around or if I'm in a particular study, I'll study along with it. But, you know, it's interesting. The one thing that I never really see as being always the absolute whenever it comes to reading the Bible is what Jesus said. Because it always seems to me that people are always trying to, you know, toss the Bible aside and then pick and choose what they want and then they lose what they don't want because they don't want to talk about it. I uh, was reading in my devotionals today, but then I was also spending some time on the internet and I was amazed that, you know, this person was talking about some perspective and I said, well, that's good. You know, we all should have personal beliefs. You know, I have personal beliefs about certain things, you know, that I believe in. I believe that, oh, I don't know if I, um, let me think of something that's personal. <laughs> it's like, well, what, what is one of my personal beliefs? Um, good question. One of my personal beliefs is that, oh, I know, one of my personal beliefs is that if I keep my hands in dirt, you know, it makes me happy. It's just one of those things. I enjoy working in dirt. I enjoy, you know, doing gardening and, you know, planting and going out in the wilderness and doing, you know, nature things, you know, having fun. You know, I just like my hands in dirt. You know, I like to grow things too. So I purposefully design my life to incorporate keeping my hands in dirt. That's my belief. I believe that, you know, keeping myself in touch with my reality of, you know, dirt, that um, that's a personal belief. Or like everything in my life, I coordinate believing that God is involved in it. So that's a personal belief. It's not a direct scripture. It's not some scripture that says every single instance of your life is directed by God or, you know, as God is involved. Now, it does say that he counts every hair on your head and he kind of gives you pretty much a big impression of that, but it's a personal belief. Well, this person was sharing a personal belief about some theological point of view and they were trying to score points because they're young and they, they you know, they may be old in the, the physical age because they have children, but they're young in the Lord in the sense of applying things that, you know, while it sounds good in theology, in real life it doesn't work that way. And when you start dealing with God, it doesn't work that way when you deal with Him personally. So I brought up this uh, whole idea. I said, you know, a really nice little short statement. I said, you know, people can believe whatever they want to, really. And you can. You have a certain amount of grace and mercy that God will take you, you know, a long ways round, you know, to bring you to the same place that you may find it shorter cut, you know, in an easier way. But He will still work with you, you know, and teach you and instruct you, and you'll learn more about Him because that's what you're here for, to learn about Him. Not what you can do or can't do, or, you know, whether you're righteous and holy or whatever you think you are. But that Jesus came to reveal the Father, and in revealing the Father, pointed to Him and said, look, you know, this is my Father, you know, as you get to know me, you get to know Him, so, you know, know the Father. You know, and follow what He says to do. And so, as I shared this, I kept saying, well, you know, it's nice to have these ideas and personal beliefs, and we all have them, and we all have our own little religious ideas that we like to do. You know, like some people like to go Sunday, some people like to go Saturday, some people like to go midweek, some people like to go night, some people like to go day. <coughs> My personal belief is that Sunday morning is not for, for church. It's for evangelism, but that's my personal belief. <laughs> I don't see Sunday morning as something big and exciting. You know, I see Sunday night maybe, but Sunday morning, no, nah, I'm not a morning person. I mean, I'm joyful and happy and stuff, but church, eh, you know, it doesn't seem so right. Yeah, I'd rather do it at night. But anyways, my point being is that when I kept bringing up, well, Jesus said this, you know, and this is what the church did, and this is what, you know, the disciples did, and this is what was, you know, throughout history, you know, and I kind of laid it all out, you know, and the person says, no, but Paul said, and then they argued back and forth, and another person says, yeah, but Peter said, and then he goes back to, well, yeah, but Paul said, but Peter said, but Paul said, well, they're both apostles, but no, you can't believe that one. you got to accept this one. No, but this one was the one that was in charge of it. And they went back and forth about what Peter and Paul said, ignoring what Jesus said. And I went, well, that's interesting. Why would you ignore what Jesus said? And I guess it all depends on your focus. If you're trying to make a spiritual point, 
and score spiritual brownies and get you know somehow kudos on your resume, I guess you really want to know what Paul said. But you see, Paul was just explaining what Jesus said in all of his writings. Peter, the same, in all of his writings are all about what Jesus said because they're all about Jesus, whether you know it or not. All of it's not about Christian life, Christian this, the church, organizing the church, or just you know putting it in some way. Paul spoke from having conversation with God, but also he was a Jew, so he was organizing things in kind of like a Jewish way, you know. And these people were kind of like you know used to democracy, you know, and it was like no, you don't do democracy in church. You know, sorry, it doesn't work that way. God speaks, you know, God directs, you know, kind of like you do what God says. You don't vote on it. It doesn't work that way. Sorry. Multiple votes just going to get you multiple opinions, you know, and multiple things. But if you all come together as one and you agree as one, then it's possible you might be right. Although, in the book of Acts, they did pick kind of one of the apostles and you never heard from them since. Don't know about that one. So, my point is, if you find yourself listening to your pastor or listening to some television evangelist or listening to some TV show or listening to some program or listening to some tape or listening to some video like this or listening to me and it seems to not agree with what Jesus said, go ask him. Because that's what I finally said. I said, look, you, know, you can argue Paul and you can argue Peter and you can argue these things because you can't ask him. But Jesus, what are you going to argue about? All you got to do is go ask him. Because he will speak to you. He will show you his words. The Holy Spirit, we're told, was given for that purpose, to reveal his words. Whatsoever things I have taught you, he will cause you to remember them. He is the spirit of truth. He will lead you into all truth. He will guide you. He will provide for you. He will take care of it. So I'm always fascinated by that. You know, because people, they just don't really want to read what Jesus said. If I could give you a, a really you know, kind of neat thing that you won't live by, but you know, really should live and die by, Go read the red the words in red. <laughs> if you got a red letter edition Bible. Because what Jesus said is pretty important, you know? It's kinda like more important than all the rest. You could quote the Old Testament, you could quote the New Testament, you could quote Revelation, you could quote Psalms, Proverbs, you could quote the law, you could quote the prophets, you could quote this and you could quote that. The rabbi said this and the rabbi said that. The pastor went this and the pastor went that. But guess what? In the end. It's Jesus, because it's him and all about him. It's all about Jesus. So find out what he says to you, because he said he would talk to you. But besides that, read his words. Because if you read the words of Jesus and then you don't understand, I think you're looking for an excuse, not for understanding. Because Jesus was blunt. <laughs> it's like, bam. And then as soon as you hear what Jesus had to say, just like the crowds, you go your own way. Because that's what religion does when it's got a religious mindset that says, yes, that's what Jesus said, but, you know, he was, uh, it's kind of like this violent thing. You know, I, I was talking to somebody about violence and they were saying, oh, well, Jesus, you know, took up a whip, you know, because the zeal of his house consumed him. He was scourging, you know, the in the marketplace, you know, and driving out, you know, this, and he was a violent man because of that. He was really, you know, full of, you know, muscles, and he went and drove out the money changers and all that. And I went, no, excuse me. All you got to do is flip one table over, and as soon as all the cattle started scattering, you know, people started diving after the money, which if you go into Jerusalem today, you see the same thing. All you got to do is flip the table over, and guess what? There's a riot. Or, better yet, you know, go down to the whaling wall and say something not kosher. <laughs> okay, that'll start a riot. <laughs> Woo! Ah! You know, as you have all the dogs running all over the place, screaming. You know, so it's like, it was no big deal for Jesus to do that. That's not a proof text like the person was trying to tell me for Jesus being pro-violence. You know, it's like, no, Jesus was like Elisha, you know. He just said, look, if I wanted to, I could tell my father, send the angels, boom, toast. And Elisha did that, you know. Elisha's um, servant said, Elisha, you know, you, you got to protect yourself. You got to buy a gun. You know, you got to get this. You got to get that. You got to buy protection. You got to do this. You know, you got to have, you know, all the armies of the world, you know, to protect you because, after all, you know, they're coming to get you. And Elisha said, Lord, shut him up. Show him. And so, guess what? God opened up the eyes of Elisha's servant and he looked outside and he saw 
10,000 angels standing on the hillsides behind the army that was coming to attack Elisha. Piece of cake. Elisha was up in a tower, you know, and they came at him, you know, and said, you know, Elisha, we want to, Elisha, prophet of God, you know, we want you to come down now. And he says, if I'm prophet of God, then God can sue him. Poof. Bingo. I don't think he had a gun. I don't think he had, you know, a whip. I don't think he had the atom bomb. I don't think he had a bunker buster. I don't think he had a clock. I think he had God, you know, and if you got God, what do you worry about? Now, if God's worked in my life that way, I don't know if he's worked in your life that way, so I don't know. You know maybe you do need a Glock. <laughs> maybe you do need all that protection. I don't. <laughs> so, I tried to tell the person, you know, just do what the Lord tells you to do. You know, if God inspires you in some way to go a certain direction, like you need to build, you know, you know, this castle of, you know, like iron gates around you and, you know, lock everything and, you know, tie everything up and bolt it down and, you know, make sure you've got, you know, whatever, then, okay, you know, if that's what the Lord's telling you. But don't just say Paul said or the Bible said or this said or that said, because then you're just using your head. But if you tell me what Jesus said, then you're using your ears, because you're hearing the Spirit of God speak to you, and then I know that you're at least asking God to direct you according to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and he is directing you. Because if you're thinking on your own understanding, you're already losing it. Because believe me, religion, religious people, doctrines, dogmas, you know, all kinds of junk is out there to completely confuse you. So, who are you going to listen to? Who are you going to serve? Who are you going to call? God, busters. <laughs> no, God. You know, you're going to call Jesus. Mine eyes fail with looking upward. Have mercy of look wrong one. God, having raised his son, raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, saved by his life. You know, that's what I always wondered about. People tell me, you know, well, if you're if you're really so, you know, like not worried about it, well, what happens if somebody kills you? I said, well, if God wants to be resurrected, He'll resurrect me. If not, then I'm going to heaven and going home. Either way, I win. It's a win-win situation. I'm not really worried about it. Are you? You know, the person's like, no, that's not the way to be. You should be worried about it. Okay, <laughs> if you say so. Uh, right. <laughs> Let me think about that for a while. Can I get back to you on it? <laughs> Jeez. I'd rather think about Jesus than worry. Our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous for good works. You see, I'm more worried about my sinful nature than I am worried about somebody else wiping me out. It's like, oh please, just deliver me from this body of sin. You know, if that means you're gonna wipe me out, cool. You know, I get to go home. But in the meantime, I gotta deal with my flesh, you know. Like, you know, that's, that's a problem. You know, that's rough. That's 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 more of a burden to me than, you know, going into this, oh, let's protect ourselves routine. You know, it's like, I don't think so. God's my protection. You know, if I can't trust him, believe me, I can't trust myself. As he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. Of his fullness have we all received grace and grace for grace. He that spared not his son, but delivered not for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? See, that's the whole thing, you know I mean? I just don't get all the reality of where people are worried this, that, or the other thing, you know? God said he'd take care of us. God said he'd be with us. God said he'll lead us. God said he'll resurrect us. God said he'll provide for us. God said he'll give to us. So God will take care of us. If God be for us, who could be against us? I mean, I don't know where you get any kind of angst, worries, fears, perplexities, or all that. If you do what he says, you just got to walk through it with him. You know, and sure, it's tough. Don't get me wrong. I mean... I mean, you need the Holy Spirit, because at the moment that you run into that situation, rather than invent it in an argument, you'll find that at that moment, the Holy Spirit will inspire you. You'll have the words, because you trusted in Him. But if you trust in your own religious ideas, 
then you're going to argue something with someone, and then I will shoot you. <laughs> Just to cut you up. <laughs> but if you're sharing something they want, you know, love, joy, peace, you know, kind of like enjoying life, you know, they may want to go, how come you're not worried? And I'd be going, well, what are you going to do? Kill me? <laughs> me? <laughs> what am I worried about? I know where I'm going. Do you? <laughs> it's like, what do you got to worry about? So, you don't really want to get caught up in listening to all these endless debates, endless arguments, endless strife, endless pointing of fingers, endless wagging of tongues, this, that, and the other thing, and listening to everything else except what Jesus said. Because if you listen to what Jesus said, I think he called his father Daddy. Now, everyone else wants to make him into God and Holy, which he is. But I kind of like the idea that I can call him Daddy and I can be intimate with him and real. And he can be intimate and real with me. And so I think when it comes to a choice of listening to Peter or Paul or this disciple, or that disciple, or this person telling me to read this, that, or the other thing, I think I'll stick with what Jesus said. Because, I don't know about you, but I kind of like what he has to say to me. <laughs> Maybe you do too.